everyone, this is OCD Live, I'm Ali Grayman, and well, let's get to some questions. Okay, so the first question I have is, can you talk about how to differ an obsession from a true desire? And this question in itself is a way to seek reassurance to make sure that the thought is not true. So if you're asking that question, think about why you're asking it. You're asking it for reassurance to make sure that this is really OCD and that it's not uh, something that you truly want or not you know, that whatever the situation is. Um, so with that, it's a question of what if. What if it's my true desire? What if it's um, not an obsession, right? That That's basically the question. And that tells you right there that this is OCD because it's a what if question. At its core, it's a what if question. If you have a true desire, uh, for example, some people are worried about, well, what if uh, one day I'll kill somebody? Or what if I killed somebody because they have false memory, right? Um, and then some people worry, well, what if I'm a bad person? Well, bad people don't worry about killing people. That's why they're bad people. You know, that what, that's what makes them bad people. There's a fundamental difference there. But again, the, this is reassurance. You know, if you are considering even like 1% out of 100, you're considering this to be OCD, that means it's OCD because bad people don't consider their situation to be an OCD. They, they don't consider uh, what if... Uh, what if it's my true desire or what if it's OCD? They know that it's their true desire. They're just like that, you know? There's there's nothing, um, you know, it, it's, it's a fundamentally different way of thinking. So that question already tells you that, is, that it's OCD and uh, that meaning that it is an obsession, right? Because if it, it would have nothing to do with OCD, like if these kind of thoughts, whatever thoughts you have, if these thoughts would be a true desire and have nothing to do with OCD, you wouldn't be asking it on an OCD forum. You would just know, you know what I mean? So that tells you it's OCD. But again, don't do this to yourself because what you're doing is you're asking for reassurance. Your brain starts to understand that this means that the situation is important because you're asking for reassurance, meaning you're trying to protect yourself and the brain is going to send you more of these thoughts and trying to get you on technicalities and, well, you know, even like something I said or, you know, something you heard on the news or some sort of, like, it, it will try to find a loophole because your brain is as smart as you since it is your brain obviously right so you cannot outsmart yourself with this that's why you can't play this game of figuring out if something is true or not because you're not gonna win and even if you are in a situation where it's just you know sometimes the situations are just extremely obvious um, and if if you are in that situation it's gonna send you another situation that's less obvious just to try to confuse you because the brain thinks you are in danger because you've been repeatedly um, telling it that you are in danger in the way of reassurance, right? So you've been repeatedly protecting yourself from something. Your brain doesn't know what that something is. It doesn't understand it in terms of um, how you understand it. It understands it in terms of signals. So it sends you a bunch of signals. You paid attention to it. So it said, okay, the person is paying attention to it. Better send him or her more of the same signals in order to make sure that the person is safe. It's a protection mechanism, right? Which works very well in real life, uh, but it doesn't like in terms of like actually, you know, like real situations. But it doesn't work in terms of OCD situations because the brain can't tell why you are protecting yourself if you're protecting yourself from OCD or not from OCD. It doesn't have the ability to judge the thought. It only sends you what you're reacting to, you know? So that's why it's important for you to stop the reaction. And stopping the reaction means stopping trying to solve this. Is this OCD or is it a true desire? Is it real? Is it not? You know, or people who have like false memory OCD, did it happen? Did it not happen? All of this is getting you deeper in and it's um, going to create more OCD in the long term because the brain is viewing now the situation as even more important than it did say yesterday. You know, and if you continue this tomorrow, it's going to get even worse. So you're adding to your problem instead of just, you know, kind of 
gripping your teeth and saying, you know, I'm not going to think about this anymore. And I don't care what kind of thoughts, possibilities, feelings, emotions the brain sends me. Because the brain's sending you everything it's got in order to get you to react. And if you say, I just don't care, I'm not doing it, I don't, I don't care, you know. It's that strong will of just dropping the whole subject. So anything to do with this situation, I don't care about. I'm not paying attention. I'm moving on. If you go like this, you will see that the brain will start to let go of this thought because you're really showing the brain that the thought is unimportant in a very strong and consistent way. And consistency is another important factor because you want to make sure that you are sending the same signal again and again and again so the brain starts to understand that it's the thought is not important because before you and I'm not saying you like in like a bad way like it's everybody like I when I had OCD it was the same thing for me you know it's this is how OCD goes is that when you first start having OCD you always believe the thoughts well not like believe them but you are at their mercy you know you start to um, get reassurance and without knowing that that's what makes it worse so and you do it consistently so now you have to consistently not do reassurance in order to reverse the damage that's been done so I hope this kind of answers um, the question. Okay, so the next question I have, it's a little bit long, but I'm going to read all of it through because it's, it's important. Um, the person says, Hi, when I am doing ERP for my certain OCD thought, I experience an anxiety spike and my brain keeps on sending me more of the OCD thought. As I watched your video, the anxiety spike is expected. From your previous video, I understand that what kind of OCD thought I am having is not important. What matters is I label them as an OCD thought. What I did during the anxiety spike are the following. Ignore the thought, tell myself the OCD thought is not important, and focus on the other thing. What should I do when I experience anxiety spike during the period of time I do ERP for my OCD? How should I deal with it? Should I do nothing or should I do something about it? Whenever I refocus into something else, the OCD thought will come into my mind. So you're doing exactly right. Um, I would say that whatever you're focusing on when you're saying, I'm not going to focus on the OCD thought, try to make it as interactive as possible and something that will give will have to have your mind's attention. So for example, you're feeling like you are about to really... Um, get anxious or maybe you're already starting to get anxious so you just experienced uh yeah, exposure and you feel like okay it's coming on call somebody okay um, if you're just at home right call somebody on the phone call a friend of yours um, and start talking to them not about OCD of course but about their life um, so as you are talking and listening and really not just like you know call them and then like have them talk but you're not hearing what they're saying because you're thinking about your own issues try to be interactive with them because your mind will have to process what you're saying what the person is saying giving a reaction and that's going to take you away from thinking uh, about OCD stuff and then because you are focusing so much on something else the mind will take it as a signal to mean that the thought is not as important and it will lower the anxiety when you're done and you get off the phone have another activity waiting so for example okay now I'm gonna go outside oh look everything is happening outside I'm gonna go get you know uh, a coffee a decaf coffee <laughs> you know you don't want to spike yourself more right so and things like that just keep your life moving very fast for the next few hours and then you will see that it's going to subside and really refuse to give any thought to it it's like a leap of faith in a way you know because in the beginning you get so scared and you think okay it must be true I have to prove it I have to figure it out but if you kind of wait it out at least say okay I am going to figure it out but I'm going to figure it out in four hours from now so that way if and that's just like if you can't resist entirely that's a good way of doing it, is is delaying it at least you know so you're saying okay I'm still gonna do it but I might not, I'm not gonna do it right now and the signal when you say that is you're sending a signal that okay it's important but it's not that important I have stuff that's more important so there's two different ways of doing it so you don't have to ignore it all the way if you feel like you can't and it's too much at least delay it and then when that four hours comes up See if you can delay it for another few hours and then try to delay it like this throughout the day until you have to go to bed because when you wake up in the morning, you'll wake up somewhat refreshed and the thought won't have as much power over you because you had all night to um, 
to kind of move on from it with your dreams and all of that. Like it, the brain was focused on the other uh, on the other stuff. Um, but I think what you're generally doing is good. Uh, when you're asking how should uh, how should I deal with it, is exactly how you're dealing with it. It's just refocusing away from the thought, doing nothing uh, about the thought, but at the same time doing a lot of things because your brain is always uh, moving, like in terms of like like thoughts, right? You gotta give it how they say give it food for thought if you're giving it nothing else it's going to kind of drift back to OCD it's going to drift back to OCD regardless to a certain extent but it's going to be a lot more if you're not giving it anything else to focus on and again you know how I say in my, all my other videos is that if it drifts back to OCD a million times you're going to move the attention away a million times because it's going to do that you know it's going to try every few moments it's going to try to get back to the OCD thought, you know, and then you have to say, nope, no thank you, not dealing with it, going back to my stuff, and then a few minutes later, oh, back to the OCD, nope, not dealing with it. And I also suggest viewing um, the type of OCD thought you have as a whole rather than in detail. So for example, in case of driving OCD, just to give you an example, um, you're gonna think, okay, anything that has to do with driving OCD, I'm immediately gonna label as OCD and I'm gonna move, I'm not gonna pay attention to it, I'm gonna move on from those thoughts. So if I get, so you're not um, itemizing the thoughts into, okay, the driving OCD thought from two days ago or the driving OCD thought from five days ago. You're saying any thought that has to do with driving OCD is OCD, I am moving on from it. You know, and that's a lot easier to deal with than to try to decipher the thoughts and uh, viewing them as separate when they're not separate. Your brain just kind of got stuck on the fact that, in, the, well, in my example of driving, that the driving thought happens to be important. Um, and it's just sending you all kinds of possibilities in it. Then I also had a question, uh, does that happen in, um, do you get like thoughts in the dreams? Like as you're sleeping, do you get OCD thoughts or OCD situations? What does it mean? And it's exactly the same thing that um, it's, your brain is working 24 hours a day, really. You know, even when you're sleeping, if you're focused on some sort of a problem, you're going to think of that problem even as you sleep. So it's going to give you like come up with possibilities or things like that, you know. Uh, so that's entirely normal. It's just because your brain is overworked on this specific subject. And the subject happens to be irrelevant, but your brain thinks it's very important. So you got to, just like you convinced your brain, you have to unconvince it now. So that's kind of the job. So the next question I have is the person is asking about false memory OCD, but about instead of like uh, like within like harm OCD, I'm assuming, um, but instead of uh, doing the harm, uh, an OCD thought about being the victim. So it's really, it's, you know, in terms of OCD, it's really just another false memory OCD thought. It's it's common. It can go either way. The, the thing is, it's not the content of the thought, but the fact that you're having a false thought, a false memory that you're worried about and that you keep um, obsessing about. You know? So yeah, it's it, it's extremely common. There's, I mean, it just like we have harm OCD thoughts, we can have these types of thoughts as well. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes people also confuse things like, uh, you know, if, if they had a dream, they can think, okay, maybe something happened in the dream, but it was real or whatever, like, like worrying that um, the dream was real, basically what I'm saying. So yeah, all of these things, like, there's just variations of false memory OCD. The important thing, it's false, but it seems like a memory. That's what makes it false memory OCD. So yeah, entirely common. And again, you have to, just the same as we're talking about harm OCD or uh, false memory OCD, you just have to disregard the situation is false, I'm not paying attention to it, I'm moving on. And as the emotions of it drop, uh, you will see that, yeah, nothing happened. This is a false memory OCD. Okay, so the next question I have, what should I do when I face my exposure? For example, if my fear lies in a banana, how can I conduct ERP on this fear? Looking at the banana for three hours, will it help? Um, so I'm assuming they're just using a banana as a kind of illustration but maybe not um, so you have it depends on the type of exposure it's it's kind of hard to associate a banana to and uh, uh, 
to an like an ERP uh, but generally what I would say is if for example you have fear of driving is driving a normal activity absolutely as long as you have your license and all of that right um, so don't be afraid of driving go for a drive that's an ERP um, say if you have fear of being uh, around other people um, you think you'll harm them in some way is it normal to be around other people generally yes it is have you ever harmed them no of course maybe you have false memories saying that but that's you know false memories besides the point right there's no the, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to be around people so that's a normal activity so go ahead and be around people if you have um, um, a fear of say uh, like like germs and stuff like that refuse to wash your hands do people refuse to wash their hands from time to time absolutely right so what you're doing is you're doing normal things that people do every single day but that you are scared to do because of your OCD so that's kind of how you do uh, uh, an exposure so another example would be, um, for example, if you are uh, afraid that in like religious OCD, right? People have to pray the right way. Um, they feel like, it, okay, if I don't pray the right way, I have to repray. Well, do other people repray? No. So if you don't repray, is anything bad going to happen in in reality, right? Besides what OCD is telling you, no. So refusing to do what OCD wants you to do, and instead leading a normal life that everybody else is leading not trying to achieve perfection so the next question that i have the person is asking that they've been tracking their obsessions and they see new obsessions come up all the time and even though obviously there's no evidence of anything being true um the person is, feels that there's new obsessions coming up on a daily basis and the person is uh, about to become a father and they are they're becoming a father and they wanted to to get a handle on it and basically the thing with this is you always have to think okay and it's good that you're tracking them so is this something i really want to do or is this what ocd is making you do no matter what kind of obsession or compulsion it is right um but are you worrying because there's a you know like you truly want to worry or is it an OCD worry since you are tracking them and this is like I said that this is great um, I think you understand that this is an OCD worry it should it usually has to do with just a few different topics most people have more than one OCD topic some people have just one but most people have a few that kind of the OCD cycles through so if it has to do with any of these topics you're not going to pay attention to it like I said in uh, one of my last questions don't itemize well this is this and this is that this is all OCD your OCD deals with this 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 and this you're not going to pay attention to it also keep in mind that since you are becoming a father um, a lot of the times when people become new parents the OCD starts to become about the baby um, so harm thoughts uh, thoughts about cleaning you know those are just very common like very very common so I just I don't want you to get frightened by them uh, they happen to most people who have OCD if they're if they have OCD and then at the same time they are becoming a new parent chances are that OCD will try to jump on to uh, the new baby um, it, like in terms of obsessions and the reason for that is OCD always grabs on to what is the most precious to you since you just have you just had a baby or you're about to have one the uh, um, that is gonna be the most precious thing most precious person I can't say thing right most precious person to you uh, because it's, it's a new person right you want to protect them so of course OCD is going to grab onto it so if that happens don't be scared same thing this is my usual my new usual obsession I'm not dealing with it but kind of grouping them in terms of I've heard this one before I'm not paying attention rather than trying to obsess and solve each one of them individually so just like you're saying that you have a constant pattern of OCD on daily basis of dealing with um, these obsessions, you have to create a constant pattern of saying, if it has to deal with this, 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 and this, I'm not paying attention. I'm not buying it anymore, you know, and, and just moving through your day. And if your brain sends a million thoughts on these specific topics, then a million times you're going to say, I'm not paying attention. 
is deja vu common with OCD? And I'm getting a deja vu myself a little bit here because I think I answered this before. Um, I don't know if it was for you or for somebody else, but yeah, it is very common. It's basically your brain is trying to um, um, trying to give you this thought in any way, shape, or form, and it could be as a false memory, as a feeling of deja vu. It, it could be anything. Again, if it has to do with your topic, you're not paying attention to it because it happened a million times before that the thought came into your mind, um, and it's you know it's just the same old, same old. But just OCD tries to always get presented to you in a different way. But it's really you know just a different circumstance. But really, at the core, is probably the exact same thing. So that's the end of the questions I have for today. If I missed your question, please resend it and I will answer. Um, I can answer in the email so you don't have to wait for the next show as well. Um, if you would like to answer a question for the show, you can email me at info at youhaveocd.com or you can leave a uh, um, comment below any of the videos and I will answer in the next show as well and thank you guys for sending your comments you know I get mail all the time saying how valuable the show is and I kind of humbled by it but I'm glad that we are able to not be afraid to ask these questions because you know even these thoughts that seem very severe and very you know like kind of sensitive topics they're extremely common. You have nothing to be scared about asking these questions. And the fact that you're asking them and other people are hearing that, you know, it helps them because maybe they're unable to ask this question. And it's it, it's good if we have this community where we can um, help deal with these thoughts. Because when you stop having fear to these thoughts, that's when they start to go away. Because again, just like I said before, OCD has no idea what kind of thoughts it's sending you in terms of content. It's just sending you, your brain is just sending you signals that you are reacting to, whatever you react to, you know. You react to a uh, thought about touching a doorknob, you'll be afraid of touching doorknobs. You react to thought about harm, you'll be uh, worried about, uh, scared about that, you know. So it just, it attaches to random things that that you react to. And that's why there's only a few topics, really like like major topics of OCD. Because those are the topics that, as a society, we are conditioned to react to. And, and that's why most people are kind of um, having worries about that. So thank you guys for sending the questions. Please continue to do so. If you need more information about uh, my website, you can obviously visit youhaveocd.com. You can email me privately at info at youhaveocd.com. Also, on my website, you have uh, the recovery program, which is one-on-one -on -one with me. There have a lot of books for sale about different specific types of OCD. There's uh, uh, articles there as well. So please check that out. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe, and I'll see you next week.